Today's a good day to have a good day. Come on, smile real big. Look at the person next to you and say, today is a good day to have a good day. You woke up again today, you're breathing, come on. You've survived 100% of your worst days. You're still standing. How many of y'all are grateful that you're still standing? That that situation that should have taken you out didn't? That every lie of the enemy that tried to rob you of your joy and tried to hold you captive, it didn't work? Because God is still fighting for you. Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord is fighting for you. Just stay calm. Just stay still in his presence and know that he is good. We are in week number four of Summer at Hope City. How many of y'all enjoyed last week? We talked about momentum in the middle, how we have nine of you. Praise God. This was a really impacting sermon. Uh, no, we did momentum in the middle. You can go back to our YouTube page. You can check out all of our archive sermons. But we talked about how we have faith to start. Oftentimes, we have faith to finish. But in our humanity, a lot of times, we struggle in the middle. That's where most of the time, we quit. But in the middle is where faith is activated. In the middle is where God adds tools to your arsenal and weaponry. And in the middle is where great faith begins to rise up and he equips you now for what's next. So last week, momentum in the middle, I pray it blessed you and I encourage you to go back and check it out. For this week, we're actually gonna be talking about something. I love this because the truth is there are people's lives connected to our destiny. There are people's lives connected to your purpose and your assignment. We're gonna unpack that a little bit more. So if you're taking down notes, today's title is Chain Reaction. Come on, write that down, Chain Reaction. Chain Reaction. Let me pray, and then we're gonna dive in. God, give us ears to hear you. We need it. God, with so much uncertainty and so much noise around the world, so much chaos in our city and abroad, so many things happening, the thing that we can count on, and the answer does truly begin with and end with you, Jesus. So give us ears to hear you today. Give us a mind to understand, and most importantly, our heart is positioned to receive all that you have for us in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen if you're in agreement. So today we're talking about chain reaction. The definition of a chain reaction is a series of events, each caused by the previous one. And a chain reaction, if it actually happens in your life, it can actually be a turning point in your life. I love that a lady in her 20s gave her life to Jesus, in her 30s kind of stalled out for the things of God, in her 40s got a little bit more bold, in her 50s got really serious about talking to people about Jesus. In her 60s, man, fire began to come alive. In her 70s, she really believed healing was in her hands. Walked over to my mom at a Kroger in Grove City, Ohio, and talked to her about Jesus, and it changed everything in my family. Because she believed that when she woke up, she still had a purpose, and that there were people attached to her destiny. So when she talked to my mom, it caused a chain reaction. My mom showed up to church, didn't find religion, found relationship with Jesus. Then my dad, who was a drug addict and an alcoholic and all kinds of messy, got set free, chain reaction. Now my brother is in full-time ministry because of the lady who got bold about her faith in a Kroger in the cereal aisle, chain reaction. I'm in full-time ministry. My sister serves the Lord. Say chain reaction. Chain reaction can cause a turning point in your life. It can turn someday into today. It can take a win, W-H-E-N, not win, W-I-N, a win into now. It's super important, though, to not get caught in the someday win-then syndrome. Some of y'all are like, that sounds made up. It might be. I wrote that down. That's just me. Okay. <laughs> someday, when I get married, then I'll be happy. Right now, I'm just str- struggling. Now, you can be single and secure. <laughs> someday, I'll be happy when I get married. Someday, when I get the ride home, then I'll lead a connect group. I mean, but right now, I just can't do it. I just, that's for somebody. I'm not gonna make eye contact, okay? <laughs> Someday when I get out of debt, Pastor Daniel, I wanna set the pace. I wanna give radically. I wanna be a part of outreach and missions. I wanna sow. Someday, then I'll be able to start giving. Someday when my kids are grown, then we'll work on our marriage. Are you catching the trend? Someday when life slows down, then I'll... I'll pray and I'll seek the Lord. But right now, I'm just so busy, I can only do 59 seconds of fire devotionals. I don't really have time to devote or invest into my relationship with God. Here's the reality. The oldest in the room, at every location, the youngest. This is statistically true. Someday, never comes. This is just a way in our humanity of making excuses. If you're taking down notes, I want you to write this down. I need to be stronger than my strongest excuse. I need to be stronger 
than my strongest excuse. Instead, we need to turn our motives into movement, which then triggers a chain reaction, causing momentum in our lives towards the things of God. It turns intentions into actions. It turns intentions into actions. The reason so many people have bad days is because we don't realize whose day it is. It all belongs to the Lord. Like we have so much time on this earth to be good stewards of what he's entrusted us with. But you know, today I woke up, my Daphne has a fever. Man, I was getting frustrated with some stuff, getting in my truck, and instead of turning on music, I just prayed all the way. And I started saying, this is the day that you have made. And I'm gonna rejoice, and I'm gonna be glad. This is what the Bible says, Psalms 118, look at this, 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It all belongs to the Lord. So I don't have, you know people that have those days. We're like, what's up with you? It's Wednesday. I'm like, it's a terrible day. You said that about Monday. Well, I don't know, and then I had to get through Tuesday. And then Thursday, we got all those meetings. Fridays is a flex day, but not really. I mean, I gotta do stuff. Saturday, I can't sleep in because of these kids. Like Sunday, I gotta go, I gotta go to church so I can be blessed. I just all right, I'm moving on. So, so. Every day, say every day is the Lord's day. Come on, we're gonna rejoice and be glad in. Let me hear what rejoicing sounds like. Come on, across all campuses. Intentions into actions, it's the same thing spiritually. If you're just living life on cruise control just in survival mode, the truth is your life will feel depleted and empty. Yeah. We're not called to live on E. We're not called to just survive life. We're not called to just kind of cruise control like, how are you, I'm working, going home and taking Benadryl and sleeping and starting all over again. <laughs> oh, the Bible says in the second half of John 10, 10 that God gave us a life and life more abundantly. We're supposed to live on the overflow. We're supposed to be so filled up that when we walk into a room, the atmosphere changes. That people say, I don't know what it is about her, but I just have peace when you're around. I don't know what it is about him, but I feel hope when he just walks in the room. So good. Out of the overflow. How many of y'all are, uh, when you drive, um, you, like, not, we're not talking about you electric car drivers. Like, I don't have to do that. <laughs> I just supercharge it and just drive it. I get it. You guys are in your own world, your own club. I understand. But for all of us, gas guzzlers, $14 a gallon diesel, whatever it is. How many of y'all uh, ride that thing down? I mean, it's on E. Like my wife, I'll say, hey, baby, your car's on E. She's like, that's fine. How many of you guys are like, your car is super loaded. Like I got a good between 20 and 90 miles left. You're like, it's buried. It's under the E. It's like way under it. I know my car. Trust me. And you're like hitting the door. The gauge goes up. I'm like, I don't understand it. Yeah, that's great faith. Great faith. But we're not designed to live that way. We're not designed to, hey, you seem like you have no joy. I know. <laughs> seem like you have no courage or confidence. Right but I'll make it another three days to 300 days. I mean, no, no, we're designed to live out of the overflow. But if you're living on cruise control, if you're just surviving the day and hoping that next year is better, I said this last week, statistically, in July of every year, people start making the decision if the year's a wash or not. This year's a wash. I just gotta get through August, September, October, November, and December, and then hopefully I can start all over again. Or we muster up the strength in our faith to say, no, 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 it might not be like I thought, but I'm not there anymore. I'm right here, and I got great faith that we're gonna finish strong. Y'all, as a church, we're gonna finish strong. Things started off a little rocky, but we're gonna finish real strong this year. Intentions into actions. So what happens is you start getting reps in. When you're pursuing the things of God, you start reading your Bible. You start praying as a priority. You start being a part of what God is doing. You're not just a participator, but you're actually someone who actually leans in. You're not just a consumer. No, no, yeah, strike that. You're not a consumer, you're a participator. You actually say, I don't wanna just hear about connect groups, I wanna be in one. I, I wanna lead one. So you start developing and growing spiritually, and as you do this and you get your reps in, God begins to fill you up. You jump on the growth, go through growth track, jump on the dream team. Y'all, our dream team is a family. Where's all the dream teamers at? Come on, like a family. And we do life together. We have a dream team in our church. They had a baby, and my wife and I went over to visit, and I was like, oh, I hope some people, 
Uh, now, now, when we have babies, we don't let anybody touch them, look at them, breathe near them for months. They were like, she was born 20 minutes ago. Do you guys want to come visit? We're like, this is unbelievable. So we go, and we get there, and they're like, I said, hey, have you guys had many visitors? They're like, oh, yeah, like 20 people. I'm like, that's unbelievable, because the dream team is a family. And when you get your reps in, and you realize you don't have to do life alone, and that we're better together, and life really does move at the speed of relationships, it is a chain reaction. Come on, somebody say chain reaction. It starts a chain reaction. And then as you're pursuing God, as you're praying and you're worshiping and you're reading the Bible and you're growing and you're doing life together and you're stretching your faith and you've discovered your purpose, this chain reaction begins to happen in your life and miracles start becoming your lifestyle. You start getting bold about your faith and realize the healing is in your hands. You start realizing that the word of God is on your lips. I had an encounter at a Starbucks where a barista had cuts and self-affliction and I could have just dismissed the moment. I've actually seen this a lot. My wife and I just saw another girl at another place, but I feel like my life is connected to other people's purpose and destinies. And I may, it might just be for a moment. So I don't want to miss the moment of romancing them to the heart of God. I don't want to miss the moment of planting a seed. So I asked this person, how long have you been cutting? As she was handing me my coffee, she said, a long time. And as I was handing my phone back to scan the app, because I knew people were behind me, I said, I want to pray for you. She said, that's nice. I said, I mean, right now. And so I just began to pray, God, whatever void she's had to fill, whatever brokenness or pain and anxiety she's dealing with, I pray, God, that your supernatural power would heal her. She's like, beep, you know, about to scan my app. <laughs> for my $9 coffee. Hey. No, I, but I'm praying. God, I, the prayer I prayed earlier, I speak Isaiah 58, 8 over her. Just as sure, sure as the sun rose today. Because we've had 700 days of sun with no rain. I don't know what's happening. But just as sure as the sun rises, God, I thank you that health, strength, and life. Health, strength, and life is springing forth speedily right now. Your righteousness goes out in front of her and your glory overtakes her and has her rear guard. And I say, look at me, look at me. God has your back, always has. He has your now and he has your next. She said, I believe that. Some of y'all are like, did, didn't did you pay for the people behind you? Because then that would have been a good story because that would have been a chain reaction. No, I prayed, y'all. I, I did enough. I did enough. I prayed. <laughs> so if you're new to Hope City or you've been a part of the family for any amount of time, you realize that we are a church that believes iron sharpening iron is essential. Proverbs 27, 17, that people's lives really are connected to our purpose and that we can grow together through the speed of relationships, that when someone encounters the unfailing faithfulness of God and the supernatural power of God's presence begins to heal them and set them free and restore them, we want to talk about it. We don't just say, love God, love people, change the world. We don't just say, know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We really believe it. We really believe it kickstarts a chain reaction in your life to tell others the night and day difference that God's made in you. I tell everybody the night and day difference. I can't help but tell people about Jesus. Yeah, because you're just this outgoing, like, extrovert. Your woo is off the chart. <laughs> now, I, I believe we made some hats. I think we sold out of them. We need to reprint them. It just says, love people. And I rock that hat, and people go, huh. I had a lady just ask me, you believe that? I said, I do. I was sitting next to a guy flying back from, uh, I, I, I had an opportunity to preach at a youth conference yesterday in Ohio. And I sat next to a guy, and before he could put his headphones on, I said, ah, uh -uh, not yet. Because <laughs> there's a chance that he's connected to my assignment. And so by the end of that flight, I ended up praying for him. I ended up talking about the things of God. He said, I like what you said there, because this is where I went. I went to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. I want you to say out loud, I'm chosen. If you've been around Hope City for any amount of time, you know that I love this verse. This is my foundation verse. This is built in my DNA. It says, but you are the ones chosen by God. Come on, say it again. I'm chosen. But you have to believe that because I think sometimes in our humanity, we feel like we're not significant enough or adequate enough to be used in the chain reaction of helping people find hope. Moses, it's not like there's new tricks of the enemy. If you read the Bible, you see the same tricks in the Bible that the enemy tries to pull on us now. So in Exodus 3, when God said to Moses at the burning bush, I'm activating purpose in your life. You're going to go rescue my people. Moses in verse 11 and 12 says, hey, hey, ooh, I'm not, uh, pick somebody else. Like, I'm not adequate. I, I, my speech is weird. Chapter 4 and verse 11, 
God asks him this question. Am I not the one that's sending you? Because if I'm the one sending you, don't you think that I'm going to give you the words to say? If I'm the one sending you, don't you think I'm going to place healing in your hands? If I'm the one sending you, don't you think that you can't grow and muster up enough faith to walk into a room with the bold declarative statement that God is faithful and good? If I'm the one sending you and all of heaven is backing you, doesn't that put a fresh wind behind your sail? Say, I'm chosen. Chosen. Chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Now, in our humanity, this confuses a little bit. Some of y'all are like, priestly work? Like, I gotta wear the collar and be clergy and all that? No, 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 you don't have to ever have a microphone. You never have to have a platform of influence, but statistically, this is what they say. Statistically, there are three people, three, three people that you have trust equity into the point where they would listen if you spoke life and purpose into them. Some of y'all are like, three people, I got tons of friends. We're not counting your Facebook friends, your farmers only club, we're not doing that. Three, three, say three. How many of y'all know you have at least three people? And I know, extroverts, you got, I got 40, I get it. But at least three people, statistically. Chosen for the high calling of priestly work is that you're aware that marketplace ministry is real. You're aware that the hands and feet of Jesus is essential to the Christian faith. That you're aware that Matthew chapter five, verse 13 is real. That you're salt and light. You're aware that I just might have downloaded from the Holy Spirit, a word and season for this group. Never have to be on a stage. You have a sphere of influence in the people that God has entrusted you to be a part. Look at the person next to you and say, you're chosen. Come on, let them know. And then this next line, it's a little heavy. It's a little bit more sobering. Chosen to be, we're gonna put it on the screen. This one right here, chosen to be a holy people. Ooh, that's a little tough. Because we wanna have it your way sort of relationship with the Lord. Like, God, I want to hang out with you, but I also want to hang out with my friends at the club. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I need you to wait outside because I got a fever and the only prescription is to dance. <laughs> like, <laughs> See, chosen to be a holy people and you realize you've been chosen. If you ever played sports, there's something about being chosen. Everybody's standing on the sideline. There's these two guys who are the captains and they're like, I'll take this dude right here. No, no, not him. Take his girl right here. But when they pick you, you're like, yeah, I'm chosen. Like, I'm chosen. There's a difference. Feeling like it's forced versus feeling like you belong. A daughter, a son, a high calling of priestly work, a chosen people, a holy people. So when you're a holy people and you're living an upright life, there's some things in your life that you've been looking at. There's some stuff you've been listening to. There's some areas of your life, maybe you've left some doors open in and you've allowed access in, some toxic relationships, some toxic thinking. I've said this before, but somebody needs to hear it. If anything or anyone is pulling you away from God, it's not from God. Amen. Well, girl, I'm not that into church. Well, you're not into me then, because I'm a church person. I, I go to church. Well, I don't really have to do all of them. No, no, no. Anything that's pulling you away from the things of God is not from God. And sometimes there is things, we live in this world, but we're not of this world. There's some things that we have to do to be set apart. I'm gonna move on. Some of y'all are looking at me like you're convicted and frustrated, amen. God's instrument, so I'm a musician, I like this, to do his work and speak out for him. Yesterday on the plane, I got to tell this gentleman the night and day difference that God made in me. From nothing to something. From rejected to accepted. Got to pray with him and he said, I love how you say it. I said, it's not the way I say it, it's the way the Bible says it. He said, I can't wait to tell my wife and my kids. Night and day difference from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. How many of y'all have gone from nothing to something? Come on, from rejected to accepted. Come on, make some noise. And when you recognize this, a fire gets lit in you. When you recognize the night and day difference he's made in you, a fire gets lit in you to tell your story. Not someday, but today. And you may still be a little duct taped together and super glued together, and you may still be a work in progress. <laughs> Somebody the other day was like, oh, she's precious. She's uh, building her testimony. Amen. <laughs> she's still out there acting crazy, but <laughs> she's building her testimony. No, but it lights a fire. And then we have this opportunity, and that's what it is. It's an opportunity at work, your career, gas stations, when you're at a restaurant. I talk to everybody. 
And listen, listen, Christians, don't just write like a scripture instead of a tip, like Psalms 32. No, I will erase that Psalms and just keep the 32, okay? No, no, speak life into, and don't be afraid to pray. Don't, don't be afraid to say to somebody, hey, I'm gonna pray for you, and they're like, thank you, I appreciate that. And I wanna pray for you right now. I don't wanna just flippantly say it, I wanna actually follow through on it because the night and day difference has lit a fire in me. But here's something that is extremely challenging. Because when we've been set free and we've been delivered, we've been healed, Jesus multiple times said, hey, go tell everybody about it. Go and tell everybody. <laughs> go, go tell everybody what I've done. Go tell everybody the miracle that happened in your life. But the challenge that we're consistent, consistently gonna face all of our lives is the power of free will. Free will is a powerful, powerful thing. It's a good thing and it's super dangerous. Free will is a powerful thing because it gives us the ability to make the choice to reflect light and hope or not. I've said this a thousand times. I'm gonna keep saying it. God is not a forcer. You're not just like, oh, he took me over again. Oh, I gotta tell you about the Lord. Like, no, he'll never force himself on your life. But he's a filler. So if you'll make room, he'll fill that courage, that boldness, that wisdom, that peace, that perseverance, that fight that diligence, that assertiveness, everything you need when you need it is found in your willingness to say yes. I'm willing in my free will to get out of the way, to walk into a room and say, there you are, not here am I. I'm willing to wake up this morning and say, God, let this be about your agenda, not mine. Because we have free will to reflect light or not. The moon in itself, y'all know this, doesn't produce any light. Some of you are like, what? Google it. <laughs> It produces no light. It's the sun shining and reflecting off the moon that gives us the light. The same is true of our relationship with the Lord. It's the light of God shining on us, to us, and through us that becomes hope to this world that needs Jesus more than ever. More than ever, we need the light of God to shine through us, fill us up so that we can receive, but then also overflow to others. I love what the Bible says in James 4, 8. Because as we're operating in this chain reaction, we have to stay connected to the heart of God. James 4, 8, come close to God and God will come close to you. There is a promise from God that we have access to, but there's also a process a lot of times that we have to walk out because you can't receive the promise without the process. Write this down. Alignment determines assignment because assignment starts with God, but alignment starts with you. Alignment starts with, with us. But the assignment, it's ultimately from the Lord. So he says, I placed this call on you. I placed this purpose on you. I've got this amazing assignment. I've said this before, but I believe it. I'm living this out. Some of y'all are just exhausted. You're like, Daniel, I, there's no way. I, I don't have any bandwidth left. I'm just shot. I'm just so tired. Because you're busy messing with things that aren't your business. Messing with things that aren't a part of your assignment. The assignment starts with God. The alignment, that's where it's a choice. That's where free will is. Starts with us. There are things in life that work. I did an illustration, I don't know, nine months ago. Probably should have done it today. But I took a wooden chair and I asked what this object was. And everybody yelled, chair. And I said, what is a chair good for to sit in? But then I sat in it and I kind of moved around. I tipped it back. And I said, if I use this chair for what it's designed for, I can pass this chair on for generations. Anybody have a piece of furniture that's like super old? Your mom's like, don't sit on that. That was a Nebuchadnezzar's living room. I'm like, my God, where'd you buy that at? <laughs> Flea market in Austin. And it's from Nebuchadnezzar. That's unreal. But this chair, if I treat it like it's supposed to be and use it for what it's designed for to sit in, pass it down to Brecken and his kids' kids. But if I use it for something else, like take the leg to drive a nail into a piece of wood, or I use it outside of the design, like stand on it to hang decorations or clear out mud dauber nests. Man, they're everywhere. Or I use it to play musical chairs and I fall on it and I pick it up and I run with it and fall down. If I use it outside of the design of what it's supposed to be for, it compromises the integrity, character, and the longevity of what it's supposed to be. The same is true of our lives. The chain reaction that God has called us to walk in, anytime we go outside of the design that God's created and called us to be, the assignment that's on our lives, it compromises our integrity, our character, and the longevity of who God has asked us to become. 
Somebody should have shouted right there. That was a good opportunity. I'll take three. Yee. I was waiting on her. We gave her a Chipotle gift card and she missed the cue. So assignment starts with God. But the alignment, which is our choice, starts with us. We all want a strong relationship. Wave at me. Cinco Woodlands Area. Strong relationship with God. Come on, make some noise. Overflow, additional seat. We do. But I said it earlier. A lot of times, though, we want to have it our way sort of relationship. We want to kind of have a part-time relationship. Jackie and I just celebrate 18 years of marriage. Come on. And we're not just surviving marriage. Because this is not conversations we're having. Hey, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're good. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, I don't want you to talk to me. That's a part-time relationship. I want you to hear this. God doesn't do part-time relationships. <coughs> he's either the Lord of everything or he's not the Lord of anything. That's a big deal. Because this isn't about rules, rituals, and traditions, and religious experiences. This is about a relationship with a living God who really loves you and actually really likes you. So he doesn't do part-time relationships. That's why I love John chapter 15, verse 5 so much. It spells it out so eloquently. It says, I'm the vine. You're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Another translation says, produce a lot of fruit. I mean, just overflowing. But apart from me, you can, read it out loud, do nothing. We have to stay aligned. We want the chain reaction to happen in our lives I'm not going to be a highlight real leader where we got a bunch of social media posts and we're like, I remember that guy. No, I want to be a leader who leaves a legacy. I want to pass down inheritance. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about character and integrity and authenticity. I'm passing this down to my kids. This is not a flash in the pan highlight real moment. This is a legacy moment. So when we align our lives to stay connected to the vine, and we're the branches. Everybody do this. Come on. Y'all did it. That was amazing. <laughs> but it's a choice. This is all a choice. Watch this. It doesn't say you stay connected to the vine. I'm making you stay. No, no. It says if you. It's a choice. That's free will. Yeah. If you remain in me. Okay, God. And I in you. You'll bear much fruit. But you have a choice. To stop the chain reaction in your life and your kids' lives. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. We have to stay aligned and close to the heart of God. We have to stay connected to the vine in order to fully and truly hear and know his heart. Write this down if you're taking down notes. One way to position, align your heart, stay connected to the heart of God, this chain reaction. Number one, we have to listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit. We have to listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Notice I didn't say two. I said we have to listen for. I've said this a lot of times, but I need you to grab this. The Holy Spirit is always speaking. Because as soon as you see this, I have to listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit. I've never heard his audible voice. I'm not that spiritual. Okay? It's not about an audible, like, Linda. You're like, oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. It could be this intuition, this, this check, this gut check, this, hey, don't go that way. Go this way. I'll give you a really practical story. This happened this week. So we believe in the next generation. Uh, where's all the HCY at? Come on, make some noise. Where's HCY? That's all of our youth. We had a phenomenal summer camp, which by the way, I know they already mentioned it earlier, but we meet here parents every Wednesday night now in the chapel. It is incredible. Every single Wednesday night, make some noise. It's amazing. We're excited. But uh, as everything was happening this year, I canceled all these speaking engagements. There was three specific events that I kept because we believe in the next generation. They're next. And so uh, I spoke at our summer camp and it was phenomenal. We had a great week. And then I flew to Orlando and I spoke in Orlando twice at a youth conference there. And then I flew to Ohio and spoke twice at a youth conference there. And I flew back because I want to be home with y'all. Uh, but I love this next generation. And so I'm pouring into the next generation while I get this phone call from Jackie. And she said, hey, I got to tell you something. It's happening right now in real time. I said, what's happening? And she said, I, I, I needed somebody to go by the house. Um, she's at the offices. And she said, I was like, ah, they could just go tomorrow or the next day. And she said, I felt this nudge from the Holy Spirit. That's, the, that's listening for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let, let them just stop by today. So they were like, sure. And they just go by the house. And when they walked in, there was a tick, 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 tick. And the house smelled like natural gas. Our stovetop had malfunction. And at the knob, it was smoking. Jackie would have just written it off 
and said, ah, that could go in a couple days. The fire department said the whole house could have exploded. She did the right thing. She called the fire department. I'm watching on camera. They rolling up in this place. They got it all unhooked, turned the gas off, and they thanked her for making the call. Our golden doodle, Bella. She was all alone in that house with the tick, tick, ticking and the gas. And the <laughs> Bella looks like Alf. Y'all remember Alf? She sits up and she's like, I promise she's a human in a dog suit. Like, it's funny. But Jackie called me like an hour later. She said, babe, I'm glad I was listening for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because if I would have missed it or I would have been so dismissive of it, because we're real good about that. Some of y'all are like, that's a coincidence. No, I'm going to give God this one and give him all the praise because he showed up again and he was faithful again. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter three, verse six and nine, the message, listen, watch this, listen for God's voice in everything you do. That's pretty loaded. Everywhere you go, he's the one that will keep you on track. I love this part right here. It's gonna say somebody free, number seven. Don't assume that you know it all. Eesh. We're pretty good about that. And then the last line is pretty declarative. Run to God. God is so much, so much more smarter than us. That's a terrible sentence, so you clearly see that he's smarter than me. So much more smarter than us. No, he is. He's, he's the creator of all things. He shaped and molded us in his image. He told the stars where to go and the water where to stop, yet he's a personal God who sees the intricacies of your heart, yet we try to do it on our own. Yet we go to Google before we go to the Bible. Yet we go to WebMD before we go to the great physician. When we align ourselves, it creates this chain reaction of faith to grow. Because a lot of times in our humanity, we pray because there's a crisis. We pray because there's chaos happening in our lives. I call it a glass box mindset. Some of you have heard me preach this before. I'm guilty of this. Kind of cruise control Christianity, you're just kind of going through the motions and then boom, you're sucker punched by the enemy. There's a storm, so you run to the glass box and break it in case of emergency. And you're like, hey God, remember me? I showed up to church on Sunday, I even put some money in the bucket. Like, we don't have buckets. So he's like, you're lying. It's not true. This glass box mentality that says, I'll only spend time, I'll only align my life to you when I'm in the middle of chaos instead of a daily repetition of spending time in his presence. When we pay attention and listen for the voice of God, it unlocks freedom. And I love this part right here. It unlocks joy in our lives. How many of y'all need some more joy? Come on, just be honest. We do. There's so much happening that's trying to steal our joy. But watch this. Proverbs 16, 20 says, pay attention to what you've been taught. You'll be successful. Trust in the Lord and you'll be happy. Come on, a chain reaction happens. Did you realize, do you realize that joy is contagious? I know the word contagious is a little scary right now. <laughs> like, you have so much joy, put a mask on. You seem really joyful. <laughs> no, it's contagious. Hope's contagious. Peace is contagious. Passion and compassion for people, it's contagious. But joy is contagious. Everyone is looking for joy. Everybody's looking for joy. Marketing companies spend billions of dollars marketing these big statements of people happy and full of joy. You want joy? Buy this hand cream. You want this joy? Buy this mattress. How many of you guys still have a water bed? Be honest. There was, there was a lady in the 8.30 and she was bold about it. She was like, I was like that's unbelievable. You want joy? Buy this mattress. You want joy? Eat at this restaurant. You want joy? Drive this car, wear this dress. Every commercial portrays the image of joy. A joy-filled person even preparation H. Sorry about that. The guy's like, oh, and at the end, he's, okay, moving on. All right, joy, everyone wants it. Everybody promises it, but can anyone deliver it? The truth is joy is a big deal in the Bible. Nehemiah eight ten, we talk about it. The joy of the Lord is ours. Say it out loud. It's our strength. Psalms 100 verse one says to shout for joy. I love how God gives us these glimpses. Some secret sauce here. He says, hey, 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 shout for joy. The joy, my joy through you and to you is your strength. So shout for your strength. Shout for your marriage. Shout for your future. Shout for your financial breakthrough. Shout for that diagnosis to reverse. Shout like they did in Joshua 6 when the walls begin to fall. Shout for joy. Joy's a big deal. And God wants us as his kids to be filled with joy. Like a mom and dad want their baby to smile. I was talking to a couple 
outside. Their baby's so sweet. She's smiling. They're like, look at her. And they're the happiest. Like other people are like, yeah, it's pretty precious. They're like, look at that smile. <laughs> Parents want to see joy and laughter on a baby. God longs for us to experience deep-seated, deep-rooted joy. I love what Max Licato says. He says, the joy offered by God is different than the one promised at a car dealership or a shopping mall. God's not interested in just putting a temporary smile on your face. He wants to deposit a resilient hope in your heart. He has no interest in giving you a shallow happiness that just melts in the heat of adversity. But he does offer a joy, a deep-seated, heartfelt, honest-to-goodness, ballistic, strong sense of joy that can weather the most difficult storms. He'll unlock courageous joy that turns us into stronger people, Courageous joy that sets hope and our hope on Jesus and Jesus alone. And since no one can take your Christ away, no one should be able to take your joy. Come on, think about it. Can death take your joy? No, because Jesus is greater than death. Can failure take your joy? No, because Jesus is greater than your sin. Should betrayal take your joy? No, because Jesus will never leave you when others have ran out on you. Should disappointment take your joy? No, because though your plan might not have worked out, you know that God's plan will. Death, failure, betrayal, sickness, disappointment, they shouldn't take your joy. They can't rob you of what God has placed in you. Because Jesus promised it in John 16, 22. He said, nobody can take away your joy. Come on, make some noise. Somebody say amen. If they can't take my Jesus, then they can't take my joy. I've realized in this journey, 18 years of marriage, 21 years in ministry now, I'm not that good on my own. Pretty messy, actually. But in order to be the husband and the dad and the pastor in that order, I have to align my life to the, to the one who created and shaped and molded me. I realize that I need more than ever the Holy Spirit. I realize more than ever, I have to pray every day. Yes. Well, you get to. No, I have to. I have to read my Bible every day. I have to worship every day. I have to surround myself with a community that sharpens me yeah. with accountability. People that are before me pouring into me, people that I'm pouring into, and brothers on the side that are speaking life into me. I have to have it. It's so important to follow the voice of God and get direction from the voice of God. I talked last week how God will give us direction, but not all the details. Come on, where's all the, like he'll give you direction, but not all the details. Yeah. Talk last week how we want the details and God's like, hey, I'll give them to you when you trust me because he's the God of direction and details, but he wants us to rely, depend and trust him and have faith in him. I've discovered that directions are extremely important though. When it comes to building something from Ikea, they're like, you take one popsicle stick and then it connects this other popsicle stick. And you're like, am I reading this upside down? It's like a riddle if a hen and a half lays an egg and a half and an hour and a half. How long does it take a monkey with a wooden leg to kick the seeds out of a dill pickle? You're like, I don't know, you Swedish design product. You're fancy. You're trying to build a bed. You make a chair. You're like, I don't know. We're going to have to try to sleep in the chair there. Then you try to un, like, take it apart, but it's made of paper mache. It's like a Mission Impossible thing. Like it will self destruct. It just turns into dust. You're like, we gotta start all over. Should have went to five below. Okay. It's the same deal, though, in our lives. God handcrafted you, but He knew the details, shaped and molded you. That's why you gotta be comfortable in your own skin. That's why you gotta look in the mirror and say, I embrace the curves and the curls. I embrace everything about me. I want to live my life in the overflow, the chain reaction of the assignment and the call and the purpose that's on my life. Because there's one thing, there's one specific thing that God has asked of us. He wants us to stay by his side so that he can show us the way. So that he can give us direction and details along the journey. I took my daughter Daphne to the rodeo and everybody's bigger than her. And I said, hey, baby, look at me. There's going to be a lot of people here. I want you to stay by my side. And she walked with confidence. She didn't know where we were going. She didn't know I was leading her to the brisket nachos and brisket stuffed potato. She didn't know that. Man, how many are grateful? March is coming. Amen. Amen. I'm, t I'm feeling it already. But I told her, I said, stay by my side. And she walked confidently. Why? Because she knew her daddy, her protector was right there. 
She knew she wasn't gonna get lost because she was lockstep with me. That one significant thing that God is asking us is trust me, even when you can't track me, let me lead you and guide you. Listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Shifting gears. How many of y'all are pretty driven people? Like you're driven, come on, wave at me. Where's all the control freaks? And you're like, I'm not lifting my hand. You're not gonna control me. I'm telling you right now. How many of y'all, let me, let me rephrase that. How many of y'all have big dreams? Come on, huge dreams, big, big ideas. That's amazing. That's incredible. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna step on your toes for a minute. Brings me to number two as we're creating a chain reaction. Number two, we have to allow God to mess up our plans. We have to allow God to mess up our plans. Because there are dreams and there's an assignment and there's purpose and God has all this for you. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 9, New Living, we can make our plans, but it's the Lord that determines our steps. See, when we try to do our own thing and we try to do our own plans, things get out of sync. It just doesn't connect right. We get in the way. We end up messing up the syncopation. What ends up happening is you end up striving versus finding your stride. My friend Mike Todd talks about this so eloquently, the difference between striving and stride. A marathon runner has to find his stride because if he's striving and he's just kind of running the first two miles, he's gonna wear himself out. But a marathon runner, man, they'll syncopate their steps with their breathing. They'll syncopate. Where's all the runners at? Come on, I'm impressed by you. I only run if I'm being chased. Like I thought about getting calf implants so people thought I was a runner, but I don't run. All right, moving on. They find their stride versus striving. Watch this. The definition of the word strive is to exert oneself vigorously, trying way too hard. You find yourself working harder than necessary. I've said this before, but so many people, they're just wearing themselves out. They're just exhausted all the time. Because a lot of times we're busy with things that aren't our business. We're doing things that aren't connected to our assignment. I don't want to do anything, say anything, be a part of anything that's not connected to my assignment. I don't have the bandwidth to just wear myself out. We only have so much time on this earth and God's asked us to be good stewards of it. I don't want to strive. I need to find my stride. And then what ends up happening is when you find your rhythm, when you find your stride, you begin to syncopate and lock in with what God is asking. But when you're working, when you're doing it on your own, you, you end up trying to find your rhythm in your career and you just can't seem to connect the dots. You find yourself striving in a relationship because of past failed relationships. You find yourself striving to try to find that special someone and you just keep coming up short. You striving in your parenting. You're like, God, they were great when they were little and now they're teenagers. Gotta deal with that. You find yourself almost blocking the chain reaction, but when you allow God to mess up your plans, when you allow God to write victory and build your story, he actually places a rhythm of grace on the stride, on those career moves, in those relationships, in your family and parenting. Watch this. The definition of stride is the polar opposite of strive. It says run or walk with long, decisive steps in a specific direction. It's actually rest that comes in the stride. I have a friend who's a marathon runner. He's run the Boston Marathon. He's run all of them. He actually runs it barefoot, which is wild. And he told me, he said, I feel like I hit a zone in my stride. He said, but I hit a wall and I have to break through it. And I have a chance mentally to fall into a striving mentality, but I have to push through it so that I can finish strong. The other thing about finding your stride versus striving is even in the season you're in, you know that God can bless and put favor on you and that you can trust him in the process. It also produces patience in the waiting. We talked about the middle season last week, that the middle season and the waiting season doesn't have to be a wasted season. Watch this, Psalms 27, 14 says, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. When you find your stride, you'll, you'll recognize again that you, you can enjoy the journey in every season. Like every season, you don't like, I just can't wait to get past this season. I got to get to the next season. Like I grew up in the Midwest as a kid. We had spring, summer, fall, and winter. Here we have summer and then not as hot and then a hurricane season. Like those are the, <laughs> but no matter what season you're in, single, I'm single and secure, married, kids, no kids, not a lot of money, more than enough. God will place grace on the pace of the current season you're in. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. 
you ever want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Because he has incredible plans for your life. And when we listen to the Holy Spirit moment by moment, the Lord directs and redirects our lives. And this is the thing. A lot of times he's just looking for a step of faith. Like you're like, I'm waiting on the Lord. And he's like, I'm waiting for you to take at least a step. So God, I want to start this business. I want, and you at least lift your leg, at least lift your leg towards that step of faith. And he directs your steps. God, if I was going this way and it wasn't you, Lord, I pray that you would align my steps and lead me where I need to go next as I allow you to mess up my plans. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21 says, if you wander off the road to the right or the left, you will hear his voice behind you. Who? God. Saying, here's the road. Follow it. Because again, there's grace for every goof up. There's mercy for every mistake and every decision you've taken a step in the direction of. And God can redeem restore and bring back the dreams and the purpose and the assignment. If you're breathing, God's not done yet. Look at the person next to you and say, if you're breathing, God's not done yet. Come on. That's great news. Even more great news. God never holds your past against you. His grace and his mercy comes in and fixes and heals and restores, puts stitches where you've been trying to put band-aids. So then ultimately when you're listening to the leading of God's voice and you're allowing God to finally mess up your plans so he can fulfill his plan in your life, you come to this place where you sink your heart to the heart of God and what ends up happening is you grow in faith. You start hearing his voice more clear. He wakes you up in the night, gives you discernment, gives you direction, begins to write and build your story. The chain reaction begins to happen and then this last part, I love this. Number three, your life becomes the gospel. The gospel literally means the good news. Whether you're a career, your career doesn't necessarily give you the opportunity to broadcast to everybody around you the, the gospel. Your life is the gospel. It's the good news. I talk to everybody about the good news. If they're flying next to me, if I'm at a gas station, I'll just be like, hey, what are you doing? We're pumping gas. Leave me alone. It's expensive. <laughs> your life becomes the gospel. Some of you know my testimony. I mentioned it earlier, but some of you know my testimony of that woman who realized her life was the gospel and she still had breath in her lungs, which means she still had purpose. And she ended up talking to my mom and that chain reaction ended up changing everything. It changed everything in the trajectory of my life. Because she lived her life out and her life became the gospel. At two separate individuals this week, it really blessed me an individual come up to me in Orlando and said, I wanted to tell you something in 2016, before you ended preaching, you said there's somebody here that has been cutting self-affliction. I actually talked about it at our camp as well. That there's this void and this hopelessness that says this is the only way to ease the pain. And this girl said, you begin to pray for the whole room. And she said, I was that person. Cuts all over my legs and my arms. But she told a story about a girl in Memphis who had internal wounds from her dad leaving her at five years old, went out to get ice at my bir her birthday and never came back. So she started cutting. And God restored and redeemed, and it's her testimony, it's her story. And she said, I lifted my hands, and I said, I want that to be my story. God, heal and fill these voids. Heal and restore my heart. Let me forgive those that have hurt me and wounded me so that I don't bleed on other people that didn't cut me. And she said, I used to get peace by seeing the cuts that I was causing, but I replaced it knowing that the blood of Jesus paid the price for me to have freedom. And she said, you spoke that into the room. And I wanted to tell you that was the last day I had ever cut. And now from 2016 to now, this is my testimony. I tell everybody how I went from nothing to something from rejected to accepted. It blessed me. It blessed me because I've chosen to live a life. that looks like the gospel. And again, God's not looking for perfection. He's looking for your heart. He's looking for your willingness. He's looking for your simple yes. I'll, I'll say it. I'll do it. I'll give it away. I'll speak it. I'll show up and serve at it. Another girl came up to me and said, you know, my husband, I see you. And she said, I want to tell you a story. She said, 15 years ago, you came to our church. She said, you look different. You had hair. I said, what's the point of that? Why was, you didn't, 
There's no reason to add that in. She's like, and it, you don't look that bad up close. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> this shit, you had a testimony. <laughs> this is not an intervention for the hair club. She said, 15 years ago, my dad got laid off. It was a career job. And our income, my dad's income cut, I mean, it was gone. And he ended up taking another job that was a fourth of the pay. We got way behind on our house payments. They were gonna foreclose. They were repoing cars. We were sitting in the living room trying to figure out how to pay the electric bill. My dad was mad at the church. He was mad at God. He was mad at everybody. She said, we heard from some friends that there was a guy coming in the town named Daniel Groh who's gonna be doing a worship night and preaching. My mom said, I think we should go over there. She said, I didn't feel like it. But my mom and I went. She said, during the service, my mom began to dig in her purse. She pulled out all the change and everything she had. When it came time for the church offering, she threw it in. I didn't think she threw a halls in there. She said, she threw everything in there. I said, mom, what are you doing? And she said, this is all we have left. She said, I remember sitting there crying and I started packing up things because we were about to leave. And she said, Pastor Mike came up and transitioned the service. And as you were walking off the stage, you said, well, hey, real quick, I got one more thing. I'm so sorry. I got one more thing. There's somebody here. You've given everything you have. All of your joy, your morale, your peace, it's all depleted. And something was taken from you and it's hurt. But this week coming up, I felt the Holy Spirit. And some of you are like, are you a psychic? This is unbelievable. There's a prophetic edge that God calls us to operate in. And when you're led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and through you. And so I just said, I felt like the Holy Spirit, I'm not afraid to miss it, but I felt very strongly that this week is a week of favor. Breakthrough's about to happen. And it was really specific. I said on Tuesday of this week, you're gonna get a phone call and it's going to be a family game changer. And this lady said, that's for us. She went home and told her husband. They were all praying and they fasted all weekend. And Tuesday, he got a phone call. And 15 years later, it was a career move and has blessed their family. He's been at that job ever since. God supernaturally provided. And she said, I want to thank you. Because your life looks like the gospel. Everywhere you go, you try to tell people about good news. Y'all, we have the greatest news on the planet. Why wouldn't we talk about it? Why wouldn't we tell people about Jesus? Why wouldn't we tell people the night and day difference he's made in our lives? Because bills are real. Because life is heavy and hard. Because the news is chaotic. We're part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And when you follow Jesus, the strength begins to rise up in you that's not natural because the super will collide with the natural and the supernatural power of God will release his spirit through you and you can live your best life and come out on the other side of every storm, all chaos, and every trial. So we have to learn to listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> This is the hardest one. We have to allow God to mess up our plans. And we have to live our lives as the gospel. With every eye closed, every eye closed just for a moment. If you're in the room today and you say, Daniel, here's the truth, man. I haven't been allowing any of this. Because I know that God's not a forester. And the truth is, I've been struggling to listen for the voice of God. I've been struggling to allow God to mess up my plans. And I've been honestly struggling to live my life that looks like the good news in the gospel, but I want to. Would you, as you're sitting at Cinco here at West Houston, the Woodlands, would you lift your hands open-handed, a surrendered life, and just begin to ask God, say, God, I pray today, this is my prayer on July 24th today, God, I hope say that you would place a deposit in every person, every life, every daughter, every son, every person, God, listening to my voice, I pray, God, that you would place a deposit God, let a sensitivity, I love the bridge of the song, Holy Spirit, let us become more aware of your presence. God, we wanna be aware of your voice, that intuition, that nudge, that gut check. God, wake us up in the night. Speak life into us and through us. And God, anything we're doing that's outside of the assignment that's on our lives, we give you full permission to mess up our plans and to carry out your plan. And then God, we pray, that you would unlock and ignite a fire so that we can live our lives 
that look like the gospel, that shares the good news to everyone far from you, that encourages us because of the deposit that you place so that we can live out of the overflow. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, amen. <laughs> Romans chapter 10, my last verse, verse 14 and 15. Three people, say three people. We have influence in three people's lives. I want to encourage you. We kickstart our Momentum series August 7th. I want you to be a bringer. Oh, you're all about the numbers. No, we're all about seeing people saved, water baptized. Y'all, we're almost at 3,000 commitments to Jesus just in 2022. That's incredible. That's amazing. But watch this verse. How can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? How can they believe in him? This is what it looks like to live out the gospel. If they've never heard about him. And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? That's our job. And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? Y'all, we're a sending church. We do outreach, missions, projects. We're a sending church. You can do mission trips. You can go anywhere you want. I'm telling you, God is sending the gospel forth from Houston, Texas at Hope City. And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That's why the scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who brings the good news. We can be a chain reaction. I'm living proof of a chain reaction in someone's life that ultimately points people to Jesus. So I challenge you this week, get in the ear of the three people you have influence in. Start planting seeds and investing time in them now. Invite them and be a bringer to week one, August 7th of the Momentum Series. And then in September, y'all, we're having our relationship series. It's gonna be a game changer. I'm telling you, the relationship series this year is gonna be phenomenal. You're gonna wanna show up early. You're gonna wanna make some room. You're gonna wanna show up in your schedule because every week is going to be fire. We're gonna be pouring into every facet of relationships. I believe it's going to be amazing. Because again, we want people to know God, find freedom discover their purpose and make a difference. God has an incredible plan, purpose, and call on your life. Do y'all believe that? Make some noise if you believe that. Come on. Were you encouraged today? Come on, if you were encouraged today, just give God praise. Come on. Awesome. Before you leave, this is the most important thing we do. If you don't know Jesus, every eye closed at Cinco Woodlands right here at West Houston. Watching online, you can say yes to Jesus online. Our team will help you. If nobody will leave just for a moment, I would really greatly appreciate it. But with every eye closed just for a moment, if you're here today and you say, Daniel, here's the truth. I don't know Jesus as my savior, but I want to. If you're talking about listening for the voice of God, allowing him to mess up plans, living out the gospel, there's no way I can do that. I don't know Jesus as my savior, but I want to. Here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons or rituals or routines. But Romans 10, verse nine and 10 says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. Slate wiped clean. Sin's thrown as far from the east as the west. Everything changes when you surrender. And the gift, watch this, was paid in full because Jesus said you were valuable and worth it. Or maybe the second invitation. You say, Daniel, I want to be a part of that 3,000. I, I, I used to know Jesus, but I fell away. I want to rededicate. I've been living reckless. I haven't heard from the voice of God in a long time. I don't even feel those nudges. I have been doing my own thing. And I want him to mess up my plans because I want to once again look like the gospel and share the good news. Whether you're one or the second invitation, when I hit three across every location, I want you to lift up your hand. One, I want to give my life to Jesus. Two, I want to rededicate my life. Three, you're talking to me. Come on, I'm looking all over the room. It's the only reason we do this. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. I see you, I see you back here. I see you back here. Come on, I see you all the way in the back. I see you over here. Come on, make some noise. A bunch of people just said, today's the day. Today's the day. All right, so here's what we're going to do. You have one more step. We're all going to pray across every location, right there online. Pray this out loud with me. Say, Jesus, it's me. From this day on, I choose to live for you because living for me just isn't working any longer. I repent for all my sins, all my struggles, all my issues. I believe you hung on a cross for my life to pay the ultimate price because you said I was valuable. Then you died and rose again on the third day to give me freedom and to give me life more abundantly. From this day on, I will serve you. I will live for you because you are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, Hope City. Can we make some noise for every person that just said yes to Jesus? Yeah, come on. That's a good day.